Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x, y equals f of x times f of y divided by f of x plus f of y. So we're going to be solving this equation. Obviously, this equation is not defined everywhere, but wherever it's defined, we're going to find a solution. So to be able to solve this equation, we're going to make it look like a well-known equation and then go from there. So here's what I'm going to do. First of all, notice that f of x and f of y are added in the denominator and multiplied in the numerator. If the numerator and the denominator switched around, then it will be better because we could separate this into two fractions. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's flip both sides. We're going to get 1 over f of x, y. Of course, you don't want f of x, y to be 0 in this case. And we can write it now as the reciprocal, which is f of x plus f of y divided by f of x times f of y. So, how do we separate these? Using the plus sign. So, when you have two fractions like, you know, how we add two fractions like a over b and c over b. Let's just pretend at this point that they have the same denominator. We can go ahead and add the numerators and write this as a plus c over b, right? And if you don't have the same denominator, you can always make one. So whenever you have a sum in the numerator, you can actually split it up and write it as a over b plus c over b, which gives you the original expression. Make sense? So that's what we're going to do on the right-hand side of this equation. So 1 over f of xy equals 1 over f of xy equals f of x over f of x f of y plus f of y over f of x times f of y. Now, if you added these two fractions, because they have the same denominator, you would get this expression right here. So what, I did, uh, what we did is correct. Okay. Let's see how we can go from here. Now, this expression can be simplified as long as f of x does not equal 0, right? So we're going to go ahead and cancel out the f of x. That's going to leave us uh, with a 1. And then cancel out f of y. That gives us a 1 here as well. So now we get the following. 1 over f of xy equals 1 over f of y plus 1 over f of x. At this point, uh, this should look familiar to you, but uh, it, it's just reciprocals. So here's what we're going to do. A lot of times we use the strategy uh, for functional equations. We can use substitution. I, I don't want to deal with reciprocals. I want to make it more polynomial-like, or I don't want any fractions, in other words. So why not define another function in terms of f of x? So let's go ahead and set 1 over f of x equal to g of x. So 1 over f of x equals g of x. And from here we can also write g of x is, or I should probably write isolate f of x, as 1 over g of x. Of course they're not 0 in this case, right? So that is, that's really good because first of all it kind of simplifies this reciprocal thing but also simplifies the whole thing. So we can kind of now replace this with 1 over g of xy because 1 over f of xy by definition is going to be g of xy. Why? Because you're basically replacing x with xy and that's what you get. So we can now replace 1 over f of xy with g of xy and 1 over f of y with g of y and 1 over f of x already is g of x. Great. So this should be, this should look even more familiar to you at this point. Let's go ahead and rewrite it with the g of x first. g of x y equals g of x plus g of y. Now what does this look like? You have a product and g just turns it into a sum. And if g is continuous, of course, uh, it is the log function. 
You know, remember uh, Cauchy's functions we talked about, and I made a couple of videos. You can check them out. And uh, Cauchy's function equation is actually um, interesting, um, and it's just the log function, basically. So from here, g of x can be written as, from here, g of x can be written as k times ln x. Now, you can use any base here, but uh, the constant k actually takes care of it. Uh, so we don't have to use, it could also be ln x, but uh, a constant will also work. So this kind of represents all bases in this case. So g of x can be written as k times ln x, but that's not the solution because we're not looking for g of x. What are we looking for? We are looking for f of x because original problem referred to f of x as a function, right? So let's go ahead and find the solution for f of x. And how would that work? We know that f of x can be written as 1 over g of x. So from here, f of x can be written as 1 over g of x. Remember, we talked about this before. And that will be 1 over k times ln x. But remember, k is a constant. So can I not replace 1 over k with something else? Of course, you can do the following as long as k does not equal 0. And obviously, you don't want k to be 0 because then you would have something undefined. So let's go ahead and replace 1 over k with c c being a constant like k. So f of x from here can be written as c over ln x, where c is a real constant. Now, we can go ahead and plug it in the original problem and check our work. Let's go ahead and do that. So the original problem was given as follows. Now I'm going to go ahead and evaluate f of x y from here it's going to be c over ln xy right and as you know this can be written as c over ln x plus ln y and of course x and y have to be positive right and f of y is c over ln y by definition because that's f of x and now we can go ahead and plug everything in let's go ahead and do it on the right hand side and see if we're going to get the expression on the left hand side f of x c over ln x times c over ln y divided by f of x which is c over ln x plus c over ln y now since we have a we don't have a common denominator so let's go ahead and make one this becomes c squared over ln x times ln y and the bottom is just going to be c times ln y plus c times ln x divided by ln x ln y. If we flip and multiply, these two terms are going to cancel out. And we can also take out a c here, ln y plus ln x. One of the c's will cancel out. We're going to end up with c over ln x plus ln y. And that's going to be c over ln x y. And that's actually equal to f of x y. So we were able to show that this expression indeed equals f of x y and that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye